Hi, my name is Julie Roca, and I am an independent senior living consultant here in Gainesville, Florida. And today I've brought someone very special with me to, uh, to chat with. Um, my love is uh, my biggest supporter, and um, we have been on this journey together as I have learned and grown in the senior living industry. And so as our podcast is changing a little bit, I couldn't think of anyone else I wanted to bring on first. And so Augustine Roca, my husband, my love, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I feel honored to be here on podcast uh, number one for... To be named, yet to, to be named. To be named. <laughs> so I, I heard some stories about you, and uh, I, I hear one from your sisters that makes me laugh every time. Your sisters were a little older than you when you were born, right? Yes, yeah, 10 and 13 years older than me, respectively. 10 and 13. And they decided at some point in their preteen years that they really wanted another sibling. And at that point, your parents probably um, were were done or thought that they were done having children. And um, so your sisters asked for babies and your parents, what was their reaction when they were well, asking? Well, no, for... they didn't. So, so, all right. First, it's important to establish why they wanted another sibling. <laughs> and the reason they wanted another sibling is they were throwing a softball around and they were tired of having to go fetch it. Oh. So they thought that if they got another sibling that... It would be my responsibility then to go get the ball. Uh, so they didn't ask my parents directly. What they did is they they prayed about it, and they said, okay, look, we know it'll happen because they, my dad had gotten tired of every night having to go and, and go buy them a bottle of Sprite somewhere, right, at the, the Vaquita, <laughs> right, which is the farm store down in Miami. Uh, so they said, okay, look, we'll pray about this, and then if it's going to happen – We'll ask Poppy to go get us a Sprite. And if he says yes, we're in. Sure enough, my dad said yes. <laughs> and, you know, 52 years later, here I am. 52 years. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and now that made your parents um, a little older. How old was your was your mom? Yeah, my dad was 45 born? and my mom was 42. When so I was born. a little bit older. Yeah. They, they, my parents used to say, vine de paracaísta. And I have a parachutist that came in. <laughs> at the last minute, and it's true. And did. did you fetch the softballs? Not at all. Not, Not at, at all. all. I was the baby of the family, and, you know, as, as it usually works out, the baby is is got the parents older, right? They're kind of broken into yep. parenting, and they get uh, a lot of attention. You yeah. got all the attention. I've I heard did. that as well from your sisters. Um, I, but will say, I will say my sister Christina did contribute to my life by dropping me on my head when I was an infant. Oh, yeah. okay. Helpful, <laughs> she, helpful. They weren't supposed to pick me up out of the crib because, you know, my mom was very overprotective. But my sister went in there when she was outside doing some yard work, grabbed me, and I slipped and fell right on top of my head. So she just put me right back in the crib crying. So while I didn't get the softball for them, she did get at least something out of it, right? She did, yeah. yes, yes. And they got a lot of enjoyment out of you. I, I hear it all I, the time. I know they did. But one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot, and this is one of the, the reasons why I think you and I are so focused on helping other seniors to live the best life and helping family members to uh, take those next steps throughout their senior life, is your mom actually had um, dementia at some point. She did. And when did you start to see that? How old were you? So I'd say that I became aware of it, truly became aware of it in my teenage years. Yeah. But you and I have talked numerous times about that awareness and that lack of awareness that you had at that time, that I had when um, we were going through this with my grandfather. And so for us, that's become kind of a passion, um, and we, we want to raise this awareness. We do. So one of the things that um, one of the ways that we raise awareness is on June 21st, it's um, the longest day. Um, the day with the most light is the day that we will fight the darkness of Alzheimer's and other dementias. And um, they have an event called the longest day with the Alzheimer's Association to help raise awareness and raise funds. 
And what we kind of like about this one is you choose your own adventure. And this year, you have chosen a big adventure that I know you're very excited about. Your sisters and I are a little less excited about and, you know, thinking about all the all the dangers that might come with it. But tell us a little bit about your adventure that you've chosen. Well, here's your question, right? Did I, did I, <laughs> well, did I volunteer or was I voluntold? <laughs> <laughs> well volunteered uh, voluntold you're uh, having a great time preparing I, for I it am. so well you know me right i get <laughs> i get very obsessive about things when yes. when i i don't know when i'm unfamiliar with the subject i i lock in and that becomes my life for yes whatever amount of time it requires me to to feel like i'm at least comfortable with the material and so i have zero backpacking experience right uh but m- one of my buddies, who happens to be the stepfather to um, two of my children, right, mm-hmm. uh, had he had arranged a backpacking trip on the High Sierra Trail with a summit of Mount Whitney uh, for my eldest, Elise, our eldest, mm-hmm. um, as a belated graduation trip, right, and unable to do it during the lockdown. It was just difficult to travel, and uh, so he and her were headed this June to California and to flying into Fresno, then from Fresno crossing over to um, not the portal, which is on the other side, but wherever the trailhead is. Right, right. For the High Sierra Trail, it's 72 days. It's 15,000 feet of elevation gain and 13,000 feet of elevation lost. Hold on, you said 72 days. This is I'm sorry, no, no, did I say 72 days? (laughs) I'll be gone for I a little think while. You meant. You're going to be walking the dogs. <laughs> no, uh, um, 72 miles. 72 miles. Eight days, 72 okay, miles. Okay, that, that's more um, along the lines of what I was thinking. You know, those those kind of little things are the spice <laughs> of my life, baby. That's what I, <laughs> yeah, it's my little Augustines that I sprinkle everywhere. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's 72 miles. Okay. And uh, I said 15,000 feet of net elevation. No, I'm sorry, not net. 15,000 feet of elevation gained, 13,000 feet of elevation lost over the course of the 72 miles. So a so lot, a lot of, of up and down. Um, no resupply. So you're backpacking in on everything you're going to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, you know, my sister said, well, are there hotels? And I laughed and I said, no. no, there's no hotels. And more importantly, there's no restrooms. There are not. And your water supply is what you're finding in the streams and lakes as you go along. So, so I got you a, a nice purification filter. system. You, you for did that. for my yep. birthday. For my birthday this year, I got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, backpacking equipment that I never knew yes. I wanted, but yep. now I do. Yes, I spent a lot of time, you know, cruising ultralight backpacking Reddit sites and then other styles that are yep. not quite as ultralight. Uh, but yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'll be fine. Especially yeah. since we had to pull it, yeah. we had to push it out until later July. Actually, July twenty seventh would be our start date now, uh, versus the original the start weather. date of June six because yeah. of just the incredible snowpack that they have out west this year, uh, which would have made it, you know, not only uncomfortable but riskier for us to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think we'll be fine now in in you know, later in summer. I think so. Uh, but but uh, yeah, we talked about potentially. You know, trying to get some sort of, uh, uh, what do you want to say, some sort of fundraising for Alzheimer's awareness around this trip? Right. Possibly. Yep. Yep. So what we were kind of thinking is that, you know, with each mile, you're going to be dedicating um, those miles to your mom and your your poppy yeah. um, for the longest day. Even though we'll be a little bit past the longest day, we can still fundraise and, and still share with everyone the progress well, not really the progress because we won't have any access to you until you get back, um, Lord willing, and the bears and the mosquitoes don't carry you off. Yeah, but <laughs> but we want to um, share, we'll share a link that you can donate. What we're asking is that maybe you donate $72 if you can, a dollar for each mile. If you can't do that, hey, you know, we were happy for 72 cents. Um, This raises a lot of awareness, and um, we want to raise funds as well to help to uh, support other families here in this area. The Alzheimer's Association has a fantastic 
programs department that we we educate in the community. We provide support. I just was a part of a great support group the other night. It was really wonderful. Um, and so anything you can donate is appreciated, but we thought that that $72 mark would be kind of fun, a dollar per mile, and he will put the miles in and the sweat. And um, I think you'll come back a little a little slimmer, a little uh, less of you with the mosquito bites. And yeah, yeah, it does make me sad. She's always getting on me for that too, by the way. But I am, <laughs> I am, I am very excited for you to uh, do this well, fundraiser well, and for, to follow for, along. And there's also, we also remember we have Ken, right? And there's yes. reasons which well, I won't get into here unless Ken, you know, we'll let Ken get into those if he wants yeah. to. But he's got some, some fundraising opportunities if he so chooses. Yes, he does. Uh, we have uh, our oldest, Elise Roca, mm -hmm. will be going. And as, lo as well as our 18-year-old Matthias Roca, yes. Matt Roca, who's graduating this year. Right, So it'll be... It'll be an adventure. It will definitely be an adventure. And I am looking forward to kind of having a wrap up. Now, you are my first guest on our podcast. I am. And we may have you back again some point down the road. We'll see. Depends on how I do. Folks. But uh, <laughs> but mostly your role is going to be um, kind of behind the scenes, helping to promote and things like that. I'm, I'm more of the, the back of the house kind of person. Yep. Right. You yep. are a wonderful front of the house sort of person. You are you, love. you are my social media emissary. <laughs> right. You post things on social media platforms and Facebook when I don't. Um, probably people in your life that are outside of our family wonder, wow, this guy just never never congratulates her on Facebook or never I just I no, it's just I'm incompetent when it comes to navigating okay. social media. That's the problem. But right? you make me amazing grilled food, so it I, I balances. Do, and I, yeah. I try to do my best to support you, right? Because I think what you're doing is important, and not not only do I think it's important, I, and and people need you, right? But I think you're exceptional at it. You were actually born to do this kind of thing, and I'm so glad that you're launching this podcast to be named, um, and all the work that you're doing both. Uh, with your career, with your placement career, and with the Alzheimer's Association. Yep. And I I love that I get to do it, and I wouldn't be able to do it without you, so I thank you. Just quiet support is my job. <laughs> <laughs> but you you are the superstar for sure. And, and again, I've, I've not met, I've met a lot of wonderful people, right, but not met somebody that has the combination of skill sets that you have that are absolutely perfect for this role. So thank you, you help a lot of people, help a lot of people, and I think it's important. And Going back to the story of my parents, I wish uh, you would have been around as a resource back then, right? It wasn't meant to be. I wish to. I was destined to meet you later in life. Yeah. Right? But that would have been, it would have made a huge difference, right? But I like to think that they're still, they're still cruising along with us. Yeah. You know, Agustin and Margarita Roca, right? Yeah. And, yep. you know, they provided... They provided, as well as your grandfather, right, Grandpa yeah. Redman, right, and my grandmother, et cetera, all these people in our lives that have helped to make you who you are. Yeah. Right? Well, thank you for coming on, my love. Oh, you're welcome. I love right? you. I love you, too. And hopefully she's, she's, she doesn't tell everybody on this podcast that <laughs> so she loves them quite the same way. It's okay to no. love other people. But, no, no. Uh, but we would appreciate if you would like this podcast and share it with someone yeah. else so, what do they say? so that uh, we wait, can wait. keep going. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Oh, right, is, is that ring the bell? Something like that. Ring the bell, yeah, to notifications when you do oh, uploads of okay. this yet-to-be-named podcast. Yes. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.